and welcome back yes now you've seen the prototype of my little dual digit display um, for arduinos and other microcontrollers when we have an error we'll be able to display some sort of value on the digits down there so we know what's gone wrong so the pcbs have arrived uh, this is what it looks like actually this is a panelized board so you've got um, 16 of those little boards in one panel because obviously the um, PCB company, in this case PCB Way, charge 100 by 100 millimeters max. So I thought, well, how many can I fit in? And uh, well, I could fit 16 in. So that's great. So I could do five boards at 16 uh, boards a time. So I can possibly give some away. So uh, it's a double sided. So you've got um, LEDs on this side and on the other side, we have the actual chip 7459595s, aren't they? Yes. So I think we need to um, have a look how I managed to build this then. As you can see, I've got one down here still attached actually to a couple of other boards just so I could move it in and out and more importantly, solder it. Use this to sort of clamp it uh, and then solder it in. So I haven't actually even snapped off the other bits yet. So um, let's, let's build one of these and just see how easy the SMD process is. And uh, we'll talk about the actual product in another video. So I want to solder another one of these things and we're going to hold the PCB in this sort of project PCB holder which I've shown before in one of my videos but the trouble is it's it's basically too small now I mean once that's in the jaws you can't get to the, all the outside um, pads can you so I'm going to have to snap one of those panelized ones off and try it again I want to give a big shout out to PCB way PCB prototype the easy way more interestingly, though, is that they're starting their PCB Way fifth PCB design contest. Yes, we can get a free Pico just for entering. Let's see what that means for us. As you can see, they've got a huge website all about this. So let's scroll down and see what we can find. So for the timeline, the project design runs from the 1st of September to the 31st of December 2022. Then they'll be reviewed throughout January. All right, and the result will be on the 6th of February 2023. And that time will whiz around sooner than you can think, so get your project in quick. Now, what are the themes? Now, there are two specific themes here. There's one for next generation hardware, home automation, wearable stuff, or uh, Earth-friendly, so eco-type projects. And if your project doesn't fit into either of those, there's the free theme where um, you can do whatever you like. The first prize is $1,500 in cash plus a $200 coupon. I'll let you read those in your own time. So if you need some inspiration as to what sort of project you can submit, have a look at the submissions bit of this page and uh, just see the high quality of projects already submitted. And uh, make sure you get your project in. Remember, it's got to be in by the end of December 2022. Good luck with that and let's hope you win. PCB way, always worth a look. Go and have a look now. So here I've got a couple of the PCBs now clamped in. So this bottom one is used to clamp it and I can solder on this top one. And they snap from this um, this board pretty easily. Basically these lines here, they're called V-cuts. And I suppose if you look at them edge on, you can probably, yeah, you can just about make out there's a little gap look in that V-cut, see it? Anyway, they snap off really easy. So now I'm going to solder this one but this is the side for the actual LEDs. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to flip it round and solder this side first with the 74595s on it. So I'll push it up and do that. Now you can see on here the footprint of the um, ICs here with that little dot both there and there. Whoever made this particular footprint went overboard, I think. But that dot always means pin one. So pin one's at the top left. So when you actually get the IC, you've got to orient it so that the dot on that IC, which I think you can just about make out there. So that's got to go that way. Okay, time to lay down some flux and, um, well, tack this on and the other one so that they're sort of in position and ready for the, the flooding of all the pads. Now, there's a chap who does um, Apple repair stuff, you know, Macintoshes and what have you. Very well known. Lewis Rossman, is it? Whatever. He says you can never have too much flux. So, um, And I've watched his videos quite a bit when I was learning how to do SMD stuff. And he really does flood it. And he always gets perfect results. So I've followed his example. So we've got to make sure this is the right orientation, which I can see is 
So that sort of goes somewhere in there. We'll sort that out in just a sec. And the other one goes the other side. Now, obviously, when you're doing this, your hands are shaking like this. I mean, well, all right, at my age, my hands are shaking like this. Um, so you do need to steady yourself on something. I'll put my thumb on this bit of the thing here. Because when you do your first tack, you've got to hold this down. It's a bit, bit uneven, isn't it? I don't know if it's all that flux. I don't know what it is. Anyway, you've got to hold it down and just tack one of the corners and then the opposite corner and then make sure that it's absolutely square on all the pads and then that's it you can leave it then and then just do all the rest of the pads which i'll show you right let me let me get these tacked on and the the soldering quality can be rubbish it doesn't matter all you're doing is enough to tack this chip onto the pcb and hold it in place even if the joint is rubbish you're going to go over it again anyway so let me just tack this in place so we've got my soldering line with the gull wing, got enough solder on it. There we are, that's that's much more like it. Right, let me do the bottom one down here. Oh that's that flux smoke is really intense. I'll have to bring my fan down. Right, that one's that one's stuck. So let me do the other one as well. About right. Let's have a look. I know I'm going to make an excuse now, but basically the camera's in the way of me seeing what I'm doing properly. So let's just get that one in there. Right, is that okay? Is that... Right, I think that's lined up. So what I'm going to now going to do is flood the rest of the uh, legs. But first, get... <coughs> I've got to get that fan before I kill myself. Right, fans on. So what I'm going to do is just literally flood the rest of it without touching the ones I've done. Just like that. And then go back over the one that I have done previously. Right, that's that leg. And then this one down here. Right, that's that. Now I'm going to turn this round and do the other end. The other side, I should say. Right, I'm now going to do this side. Sorry that the camera is all a bit skew whiff, but it's the best I can do. That's that one, and then this one. And as you can see, the flux really does make it stick like, yeah, the proverbial. Right, that's done. Loads of flux all over it, look, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to clean that all up. Now, the way I clean that up is using... Um, IPA, which is, no, it's not the beer, it's the isopropyl alcohol um, and a short-haired horsehair brush and some of these baby things, yeah, cotton bud things, that's it. So, first of all, let's get rid of all this excess flux, which you can see is just swamping everywhere. All right, okay, that's fine. Now, I'm going to tilt this down a bit. Can you still see that? Yeah, so it's going to drain that way. So here's the IPA going on, and it will just basically let it all drain that way. And I can just sort of pick it up at the, the bottom there. This is now being done backwards towards the camera, the way exact opposite way so I'd normally do it. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't it? Try to film this. I don't know how other people do it. I really don't. Anyway, uh, that's... That'll do for now. I'll probably go over it again uh, before we finish. But that's it. That's those two chips on. Obviously, I'm going to have to check now that each one of those is soldered under the microscope. But apart from that, I think they're good. I've just now got to solder those three resistors on the bottom. That's going to be a 10K in the middle and then a 270 on each end, R1, R2. Right, so those little specks you see on the end here, these, yeah, they're the little three resistors. I've got a solder on. You can see one. That's a 270. One of these is a 10, and the other one's a 270. They're upside down, these these what ones. At least resistors do give you the values on them. Capacitors don't. They're a real pain in the WhatsApp. Anyway, let's put those three then on the board with some flux. The flux will sort of stick them to the board and then just dab them with the old soldering iron. Right, the resistors are sort of position right. Um, I have to admit that when I designed this board, I think I designed it for those resistors, resistors to be 0805 sized. 
and these of course aren't, these are 0603, which means they almost fit entirely in the gap between the pads rather than on the pads. As it happens, we can get away with it, but it's not ideal. That one in the middle, the 10K, it says 103, which means 10 followed by three zeros, which is 10,000, 10K. That pad is actually the right size. So either I wasn't paying attention about the size of these, or I expected to have bigger resistors, and I can't remember which way around it was now. But we can just about get away with that. Right, so I've just dabbed those on now, and because of the flux on there, and you know, the tiny little things, aren't they? They just stick straight away. Now, always, you'll see here, look, there's far too much solder on here, really. But that's the trouble if you don't use solder paste. That soldering iron holds too much solder for an individual component like this. It's fine but when you're doing legs down here. That's great. But these little individual components need far less solder. I should really go over these again and just take some of that solder off. But if you think I'm doing that, think again. No, we're going to now clean that off using the, um, the cotton bud and the horsehair brush and a cloth, which I also have here. Right, let's uh, just clean those off and just see um, if they're good enough. I'm gonna have to put it under the microscope though to uh, double check all this. Because the last thing you need is to finish it all off and then discover that in fact you've got a bad joint. Right. Make sure everything's done. Yeah, it looks about right from what I can see with the naked eye plus four. Now just in case you suddenly thought my eyesight had become bionic or something, that's not true. I wear these a lot of the time. Um, these are jewellers um, or model makers glasses and this bit here at the front, um, this bit here, comes in all different magnifications. These are actually plus four now but you get plus three and a half, three, two, all in a little kit and I've um, explained all this before in the video. So that's what I use, and they're really good. And when I don't use these, because I just don't need that sort of magnif magnification, I use these reading glasses. Tra-la! Uh, I bought these actually from Banggood because they're unbreakable. Not strictly true. Th this bit is, look, this is all bendy here, right? This is unbreakable. But the bit holding the actual glass in is not unbreakable. Anyway. So if you start pushing these together, they will snap. But um, I just chuck these on the bench, at least this bit doesn't break and it, it's pretty good these are plus four as well funnily enough you think plus four would be the same in both glasses and those jewelers ones not so these have not the same level of magnification uh, as those jewelers ones so yeah i'm going to be wearing those jewelers one for this little bit of um circuit surgery is that joint okay there yeah it looks like it obviously i can use the multimeter to um, double check as well but i think that's okay so that means now we need to solder the digits on the other side. Right, I'm just going to tack these in place. Um, I don't really want them to move. I don't really want to scratch them with the uh, little tiny tweezers I've got either. But... Well, okay, that's not too bad. Not too bad. I think I'll just, I think I'll just go for it. Okay, time to put the clips on, tidy all this up, check it under the microscope, re we do a couple of these things here. I'm not very happy with some of those. There's a bridge for a start. So I'll do all that. When the camera's out of the way, I can actually get to the device and solder it properly. Now, I just thought I'd share these pins with you because they're actually header pins, as, as you may have seen many times before, of course, as part of your Arduino work. But these are offset. Like you see, well, I'm hoping you can see, um, there's a, a kink in that side of things. So they become surface mount uh, header pins. So I can solder these on here now and they remain nice and square on the board because of that little tiny offset. Right, I'm just going to finish that off, clean this up with some uh, IPA, and we're done. Right, so I've uh, checked these all, all over, um, the soldering joints. They're OK. I've cleaned them off as best I can. Still a bit of flux on there. I'll sort that out later. So both sides are OK. Yeah, those caps really should be sold on. They're just basically um, to stop any sort of interference on the VCC and ground lines getting through to those chips. The spec, the data sheet, does not say put them in. But funnily enough, I was going to put them in anyway. And then one of the viewers said, don't forget your caps across the chips. And I thought, hmm, yeah, well, maybe I should. They're not actually quite as close as they should be. They should be physically close to the VCC and ground line. But that's as close as I could do it on this one. Anyway, time to take this over to the board, which is over here. So that's the other one that was, that was running quite happily. So let's just take that one out. Yep. Put that down. Let's try this one here. 
Right, this plugs in. Let's get it right. It's like that, isn't it? Oh, no, that's not right. It's that way. <laughs> there we are. It's not plugged in fully, but hey, look at that. It's working. Does it display all the digits? Let's have a look. There. Yeah. Oh, as it displays 42 in a minute, we'll be all right. Hey, it does. There we are. So 42, answer to life, universe, and everything. That's great. Okay, good. Success. See, SMD soldering isn't quite as difficult as you might think. And there we have it, the final product. I've even trimmed the board now to take up all those extra bits that are on the side. Very easy to do. You just get a pair of pliers and just sort of tweak them off, and they, they come off dead easy due to that scoring that we saw in the other part of the video. So I quite like this, I must admit. It means I can plug this into any project now, either permanently or plug it in to see what's going on just for a while. So I'm really happy with the result, I must admit. That's really nice. And uh, thanks again to PCBWay for supplying all these lovely little um, PCBs. It's really good, isn't it? Good stuff. Okay, well, I'm really happy with that. If you've got any comments, any suggestions on how I could done the soldering better, perhaps, um, remember, a lot of it was cack-handed. I had my phone camera on this big video one, sort of balanced on its stand, and it was it was quite awkward. But I think I think we got there, and I think some of the the shots are quite good. And if you haven't tried SMD soldering yet, I strongly recommend that you buy the SMD practice kits from places like Banggood. Uh, what they are basically are PCBs uh, plus components they give you, including chips and everything else. And the idea is that you just practice soldering them on until you think, oh, I can do this now. Um, it doesn't actually build anything. They literally, it's, it literally is an old board with some components that happen to fit. But I use that and literally by the time I've done even half a board, you suddenly think, that's OK. I know what I'm doing ish. Yeah. Uh, what? I don't. Oh, OK. Put put your comments down below then how I could have done it better or um, anything else you want to say. Really, you can agree, disagree, suggest comment anything you like because youtube like it when people put comments down there it means there's a bit of interaction and talking of like if you like it don't forget the like um hey yeah because youtube once again like it when people like it great and if you like these sort of videos and we'll be talking a little bit more about this and others don't forget to subscribe and tick the bell if you don't tick the bell you won't hear from me daft isn't it but it's a two-stage process don't forget to do that Great, it's been really nice seeing you here today. Don't uh, forget to watch some other videos. See you in the next one. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.